My name is Marguerite Perkins Garrick, and my parents, Carol and Marlon, founded the Endangered Wolf Center in 1971. They organized this meeting that was in late 1970 and found every biologist that was working in the field with wolves that they could in the U.S. and Canada and invited them to come. And the news was so much worse than anybody had expected. It became clear that the most highly endangered subspecies of wolf were the red wolf, which used to be in Missouri, and the Mexican gray wolf. And they had almost been killed to extinction. My dad decided that it was time to make a bold move. He suggested to the group that they take all the remaining wolves out of the wild and bring them into managed captive breeding so that they could keep them alive until people's hearts and minds could be changed enough to release them back into the wild. So we had the beginnings. My name is Charlie Hessel. I'm Director Emeritus of the St. Louis Zoo. When Marlon retired, I went up the ranks and became Zoo Director. But I stayed close friends with Marlon and Carol. After all, Carol was the one that got my job at the zoo. So we stayed strong friends throughout my career up until, of course, the very end. Well, both Ron and Carol Perkins loved animals and they loved endangered species very much. And they thought everybody else should too. And they felt that the most important way to get people interested in conservation and in wildlife was to teach them about them. And the more they knew about it, the more they would care. And so teaching children, getting children involved, getting adults involved and making it as knowledgeable as possible by making the information as interesting as possible. This is what both Carol and Ron were very good at. They're both vivacious speakers and they can simulate that interest. And if the public knows enough about wildlife, they'll care enough to do something about it. My name is Virginia Bush and I am the Chief Strategist of the Endangered Wolf Center and I recently served as the CEO for the last decade. Marlon had such forethought into why these apex or predator species were so important for the ecosystem, but he didn't really have any research to back it up. And that has come. Now we know that putting wolves back out into Yellowstone, one of the best experiments that we have, has changed the ecosystem completely. It's changed the way rivers run. It's brought back the riparian areas. It's brought back many of the elk and the ungulates. And so we have a much richer, fuller, more natural ecosystem because of that apex predator. So he was really way ahead of his time with this. He knew that we needed to preserve wolves to keep the ecosystem balanced. Vicariously throughout my teenage years, I was working with Marlon Perkins every Sunday afternoon on the couch with my family. Seeing what uh, Mr. Perkins was doing Sunday afternoon certainly inspired me and I thought, wouldn't that be an incredible job? Mr. Perkins was such a legend and such an icon and just the fact that I would be able to follow in his footsteps a little bit and of course work with Jim Fowler was a, sort of a dream come true for me. I think this is the first one of its kind where the focus was not on the animals being displayed so much as the animals having a naturalistic environment with lots of private places and lots of room to run that was a replica of what their natural environment might be like. And originally the whole thing was housed in trailers. Uh, there wasn't even a vet trailer right off the bat. Uh, there was just the education trailers and they were uh, not in the best shape. <laughs> First step was getting out of them, moving over into the others, and, and it's just been a slow progression, just been kind of amazing how it's, how it's grown from sort of a mom and pop organization when it started growing into what's now a, a AZA recognized center. My name is Tracy Ryan, and I am the Conservation Assistant and Registrar here at the Endangered Wolf Center. I have worked here for 25 years. Over the past 25 years, the center has changed quite a bit. We have grown in every aspect of 
what we do, our mission, all of our departments, everything that we participate in. When I started, we had five full-time staff members and one part-time staff member. We housed four species of canids. We did tours one day a week. Now, we have added five more species of canids. We've added ambassador animals. Wolf conservation has evolved over the years, um, and our center has been very involved in that. Our founders had the unique vision and foresight to think that wolves might be reintroduced someday, and so that from the very beginning, the center has been focused on those goals. After they had built up the population of Mexican gray wolves here at the center, the first wolves were released. I wish my dad could have lived to see that. But my mom was here, and it was just a thrilling moment to know that these wolves from the center were living in the wild. We were certified by AZA back in 2001 and have taken some leading roles in some of the AZA programs. Our location allows us to work with the AZA Reproductive Management Center, which is at the St. Louis Zoo. And so for decades, we've been working on different aspects of reproductive conservation. The collaboration between the Endangered Wolf Center and the world of zoos and wild wolf populations is so important. Both the red wolf and the Mexican wolf populations are so fragmented that the gene pool needs to be broad enough to support them into the future. Well, the Endangered Wolf Center is very important in the total collaboration between the captive wolves in zoos and in sanctuaries throughout the country where unrelated animals can be brought together in the lab. And in 2005, we did the first artificial inseminations in Mexican wolves. In 2017, we did the first artificial insemination using frozen thawed semen. In moving conservation forward, we helped push for Mexican wolf program to do puppy fostering into the wild. Pup fostering involves us taking puppies out of the den um, when they're less than two weeks old and then putting them into a wild den with puppies that are about the same age. My parents would be overjoyed if they could visit the Endangered Wolf Center right now, 50, a little plus years after they launched on this adventure. They would particularly love the transplanting of brand new baby wolves into wild dens because that just represents so perfectly everything they knew about wolves. That the mothers are so maternal and the pack is so nurturing in helping to raise pups that this can work. My name is Mark Cross. I'm the executive director of the Endangered Wolf Center and I've been here since the fall of 2019. One of the things that I think is very important to realize about the Endangered Wolf Center is our collaborative nature. We did not stop what we were doing in terms of conservation. I think that's an important part of our, of our DNA and 2020 was a record-breaking year for cross-fostering. We did adapt and we adapted very quickly, but I think we did it based on our strengths, uh, the strengths that came out of our 50 plus years. We decided to move forward with a three to five year strategic plan in the midst of the first year of the pandemic, which again, I think speaks to the nature of the center is that we were not gonna stop planning and looking ahead to the important issues of conservation and the Endangered Wolf Center's role in that. My favorite thing is just the people just good people all the way around, just dedicated and hardworking and amazing what they've accomplished. Wildness is an important part of our environment and we want our descendants, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren to enjoy the natural America as it was and we hope as it will be in the future. So promoting an interest in conservation at all levels and funding the Endangered Wolf Center is very important. And I know my wife and I are going to support it and we're going to ask our children to support it as well. We feel that it's that important. An apex predator in the wild is really what we need to keep our ecosystem healthy. 
every single piece of that puzzle matters and you see it more and more every single day. So my passion to continue to support only grows. And I think this next generation needs to hear that yes, indeed, our problems are not overwhelming and insurmountable. If we all focus on change, just as we did years ago, uh, we can solve them and continue to save our natural world. There's so much to be proud of for what the Endangered Wolf Center has done for the last 50 years. And we know that moving towards the future, we need to continue to expand those programs and to grow upon our already existing success. And one of those big issues is education. We need an education building to increase our capacity so that we can influence more and more people. We need to actually staff more people for those camps, for those off-site community-based conservation programs so that we can continue to make an even bigger influence for the endangered species that we help protect. The past 50 years have been incredible here at the Endangered Wolf Center. I can't wait to see what we accomplish in the next 50 years. We're protecting the heart of the wild and we want you to join us. Thank you.